Good morning, and welcome to Byron United Church, where Jesus Christ is Lord. It's too bad that we can't be together today to worship, but uh, I'm pleased to be able to uh, be with you on video, at least, as uh, I'm on vacation, and uh, Helen Keenly's side uh, is scheduled to be our guest preacher on Sunday morning, and so earlier uh, in the week, Helen came in and recorded uh, a video of her sermon that she was going to be sharing with you this day, and uh, we're just uh, missing out on the donuts today, um, and I'm certainly missing all of you, and I pray that you would uh, be blessed by the Lord wherever you may be that you would be safe, that you would be keeping others safe, and uh, being in contact with uh, with your loved ones, both uh, inside the church family and your, your biological family and neighbors and friends. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be poured out upon us, upon our nation, upon the world that during these days of isolation, these days of concern, that you would awake within each person a hungering and a desire for something more, something better than what life had become. When we're removed, Lord, from the routines of life, you have a way of planting seeds, of allowing us to quiet our hearts and minds and to hear your still small voice. We pray, Lord, for ourselves and for all people that we would hear your voice, be drawn to you, turning our hearts and our lives, our thoughts to you, that we might come to love you and serve you better and share the good news of Jesus Christ with all. We ask all of this in the glorious name of Jesus Christ, and all the people said, Amen. Good morning, Byron Church. It's good to be here with you. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from John 16, portions thereof, starting at verse 16, and entitled, The, Grief, the Disciples' Grief Will Turn to Joy. The, the setting here is that Jesus and his disciples have just finished eating the Last Supper, or the Passover meal. They're still in the upper room, and Jesus is giving to them his last words of encouragement and instruction and advice. Jesus says, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I'm going to the Father? They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said, are you asking one another what I meant when I said, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come, but... When her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you're speaking clearly and without figures of speech. This makes us believe that you did come from God. Do you believe now? Jesus replied. A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered each to your own home. I have told you these things so that in me 
you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Here ends our scripture reading this morning. May God bless to us his word and give us understanding for his message. Amen. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. These are the last words Jesus spoke to his disciples while still in the upper room. His last words of instruction and encouragement before going to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. Think for a minute of Jesus as the coach of a big game. Think of this as his pep talk. Think of a protective mother just before her son or daughter is going off to college or university for the, same, the first time. The coach and the mother both have invested a great deal into their team or into their child. They want the best for them. They want them to be prepared and to be able to make the best decisions in whatever circumstances come upon them. The parent and the coach are pouring out their hearts to these young people that they care so deeply for. Jesus is trying to coach, to say to his closest followers, Look, you're going to come up against tough times. People will give you a rough time, and some of it will be very rough, even to death. But don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. He is saying to his disciples, there is a far bigger picture here than what you have ever experienced so far in your lives. Stretch your thoughts, stretch your imagination, and strive to see the big picture. During this, this uh, intimate conversation, Jesus told his disciples, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than, me, than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus is saying, look guys, remember all those miracles you saw? Peter, remember walking on the water? Guys, remember feeding 5,000 men with five loaves and two little fish? Remember that you gathered up 12 baskets of leftovers. You will do miracles too, and even greater ones than I did. Why? So that the Father may be glorified. He said you will do greater works so the Father may be glorified. In our current situation with coronavirus spreading and not knowing when or where it will end or how it will impact our lives, we can be afraid or at least very worried about the health and safety of our loved ones, ourselves, our friends, our neighbors. We don't know what lasting effects this could have on our lives or the way we live. Some things that we are all becoming more aware of is the importance of washing our hands, personal space, and respect for one another. This pandemic is somewhat manageable in Canada for most of us, but when we think of the homeless, or those in prisons, or in crowded refugee camps, or those without social safety nets, the concern for our neighbors around the world becomes very real. We pray that this epidemic will subside quickly with the least possible amount of suffering worldwide. Maybe we could use a pep talk these days. From Jesus we hear, in this world you will have trouble, 
but take heart, I have overcome the world. At times like this, we can be reminded that no matter what happens to us or to the world around us, Jesus is in charge. He is in control. We can withstand anything, any difficulty, through Christ who gives us the strength. We don't overcome on our own power and authority. Our ability to overcome, to see the big picture, to see from God's perspective, comes from being in right relationship with Jesus. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. The big picture is that Jesus has already won the victory. He's winning and he will continue to win the victory. And we can trust him in all circumstances. Jesus didn't promise us a life without difficulties and challenges. Quite the opposite. He told us we would face challenges. But he also said that within the difficulties and challenges, challenges, we could find peace. That deep inner peace that can only come from God. The peace that surpasses all human understanding. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give it as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. So how do we find that kind of peace when we are now, right now, in a state of emergency in the province of Ontario? Let me invite you to think of this as an opportunity to deepen your faith. And with that, to deepen your relationship with your Lord. With our activities cancelled, we're at home. And we have time on our hands. I encourage you to choose to use this time to reflect on who God is. Open your Bible. Find a word or a phrase or a sentence that pops out at you, that speaks to your heart, that gives you a sense of peace and comfort. The Psalms are a great source of comfort for me. But dwell on this, the scripture that speaks to your heart and quietly let it sink into your soul and heal you of anything that would separate you from God. Worry and fear cannot dwell in the same space as peace and love and joy. Your thoughts might flick back and forth between these two states, but you can choose to trust in the Lord and choose to return to peace and love and joy when tension caused by worry and doubt and fear creep in. This morning I opened my computer and read my daily meditation from Henri Nouwen's writings. He was a priest who influenced many people in the ways of meditation and contemplation. Toward the end of his life and ministry, he lived in a large community. And there he learned far more about love and peace and joy through practical experience than he had learned in all of his other experiences in life. This morning, I opened my computer and I read these words from Henri Nouwen. Solitude or what I'm calling quiet meditation or contemplation. Solitude is not a solution. It is a direction. The direction is pointed to by the prophet Elijah, who did not find Yahweh in the mighty wind, the earthquake, the fire, but in the still, small voice. This direction, too, is indicated by Jesus, who chose solitude as a place to be with his father. Every time we enter into solitude, we withdraw from our windy, earthquakey, fiery lives and open ourselves to the great encounter. 
The first thing we often discover in solitude is our own restlessness, our drivenness, our compulsiveness, our urge to act quickly, to make an impact, and to have an influence. And often, we find it very hard to withstand the temptation to return as quickly as possible to the world of relevance. But when we perceive, or sorry, persevere with the help of a gentle discipline, we slowly come to hear the still, small voice and to feel the gentle breeze and so come to know the Lord of our heart, soul, and mind. The Lord who makes us see who we really are. When we are at peace in difficult times, our faith becomes evident. This may open the way for us to offer words of comfort and encouragement to others who are stressed and fearful. They may wonder, or even ask, where your peace comes from. Be ready to answer in a spirit of love with humility. I encourage you to reach out to your neighbors. Pick up the phone. Ask how they're doing. If you are able to do something for them, ask if they need anything. Maybe all they need is a friendly word of encouragement or someone to pray with them over the phone. Let your light shine. May God bless you with his peace as we face whatever lies before us in the coming days and weeks and months. And may God, our Heavenly Father, be glorified. Amen. Thank you, Helen, for sharing those words with us, proclaiming the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, our Savior, our friend and companion, we confess to you our fears and worries. We fall into the pit of wondering what our future holds. Forgive us, Lord. Teach us to trust you more than ever as we face the unknown future days, weeks, and months. Speak to our hearts as we draw closer to you. Speak to us through your Holy Scripture. Help us to find the words of comfort that will calm our souls and bring peace, love, and joy to our spirits. Give us the courage and conviction to do what you are inspiring us to do in response to the coronavirus. Guide our thoughts, our conversations, and our actions as we reach out to our families, friends, and neighbors, either offering our help or asking for their help. Show us how to allow these times to be a blessing Help us to deepen our relationship with you, to know you as never before. It is in the still, small voice we sense your presence and are blessed to commune with you. And now, Lord, we pray for others, for health and safety and peace of mind for our families, friends, and neighbors. We pray also for health and safety and peace of mind for those around the world who are already mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray for those who will become ill, their loved ones and caregivers. We pray for the leaders of the world who make wise decisions and to hold the safety. We pray for the leaders of the world to make wise decisions and to hold the safety and health of their people in highest regard. We pray for the healthcare workers and first responders, for courage, energy, and health as they give so much of their time and energy to protect us. Lord God, we know you are ultimately in charge. We choose to place our faith and trust in you. Speak to our hearts in this quiet moment. Speak to our hearts in our quiet moments of meditation and contemplation. Grant us the peace that can only come from you. Peace that is your gift to us. And may God, our Father, be glorified. Amen. As long as is necessary, we will continue to provide videos like this that will bless you and help you to realize that you are not alone, that you are surrounded by many friends. And if there's anything that the church family can do for you, be sure to let us know.
know that the Lord God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with you. May you feel his presence, may you know his peace, and may you know the joy of living close to the heart of God. Amen.